what a day. I got to tell you, this early retirement thing, people think that uh, there's not much to it. But uh, just to tell you a little bit about my day, I was up at about 7 o'clock this morning. I uh, took my wife to uh, my mother-in-law's house uh, so she could spend some time with her mother-in-law, and uh, who I uh, adore dearly. But uh, And since she's about 80 miles away, I decided, why not? Let's play some golf. So I played some golf out in the area. Then saw a buddy of mine who lives in the area, had dinner with him, and uh, drove back home about an hour and a half later. And here we are now, it's about nine o'clock. And you know, when you look at this early retirement thing, people think that you just kind of waste away into sitting on the couch and watching YouTube videos, but there's, there's so much more to it. And so I, I thought as I was coming home, what more appropriate a topic than to talk a little bit about early retirement and, and, and what that means and, and what that's meant to us as a as a, as a next step in our journey together. So, uh, you know, uh, before we get into it, I'd like to welcome you to back to the channel. I'd like to ask that each of you take a moment to hit that like and, and subscribe uh, to the channel. Uh, I'll be uploading new content as it comes. Uh, I anticipated originally that it would be on a weekly basis, but I got to be honest with you, I'm just incredibly excited and I don't think there's another um, organic online advice channel like this one. And so I just want to continue to bring you content as much as I can and as much as I have something that's that's compelling to talk about. So again, thank you for those of you that have been here before. Welcome back. And for those of you that, you're, that if it's your first time coming, thank you for coming to the channel. Uh, so let's get into it. So when we started to look at early retirement, about... Eight years ago, my wife and I, we had had careers um, saving money, putting money away, 401ks and Roth IRAs and rolling over IRAs and putting money in the savings accounts and so on uh, because retirement seemed like it was it was incredibly far away. And again, just as a frame of reference, I'm uh, 52 and we started this journey about uh, 12 or 13 years ago, my wife and I. So we were just putting money away and thinking that we were going to retire when we were 60, 70, something like that, 65, 70. And so what we did is we decided to take steps uh, out of the gate. And so one of the first things we did is we knew that the um, that one of the biggest barriers to retirement is having outstanding debts. And so we really put our efforts together to go as debt-free as we can. We still had some car payments at the time. We were still paying for a paying for a mortgage on a home, but we wanted to get out of credit card debt. And the number one thing was get out of credit card debt because the credit card debt is money that you're paying and it goes nowhere. At least you can write off mortgage interest on your taxes, but credit card debt goes nowhere. Car debt goes nowhere. So the idea of having a new car every so often, it didn't appeal to us. So we started, we, we took away that money and or that uh, expense and just went debt free. And we were able to take that money and then put that back into our savings. But we realized that it's interesting because when times are good, interest rates are low. And when interest rates are low, bank accounts don't pay anything. Um, and it seemed like high interest or high yield savings accounts did a great job for us when times were tough. But Again, the last 11, 12 years, we've had pretty good uh, economic, except for this last three uh, or so years, uh, COVID and post-COVID, uh, we've had some challenges, it, it looked like, with the market. But for the most part, things were, things were down. And so about eight years ago, we wanted to take it to the next step. And just like we would say with anything else that's of... Uh, you know, you, you have a problem with your with your with your plumbing, you go to a plumber, you have a problem emotionally, you go to a therapist. And so when we we're trying to figure out what we we're going to do financially, uh, we went and talked to a professional uh, financial professional. We, we talked to a financial planner who gave us some advice and really did a nice job 
uh, of helping us understand what our financial situation was, all the money that we had in savings, put it together. And the next question was, what do you, uh, what, what's your budget? What do you think you're going to spend in retirement? And we started to take a look at all of our spending and realize that, ironically, a lot of the money we're making, we're putting away. And so if we're not putting that money away, what, is that, what does that do for us? So we talked to our financial person, uh, and, and what we found was talking to a professional, we got access to things that we didn't know existed in the format they did. So for example, instead of putting money into our bank uh, savings account, uh, there was a money market account. And this money market account pays about at the time paid about 5%. And so we put a bunch of money into savings there. Uh, we looked at how we were invested and some of our money that we had in just regular accounts, some went and they went to bonds and, and tax-free municipals and all these different types of things that help in a bunch of these different contexts that really have the net impact of, of helping you either gain or maintain uh, your wealth, either through going up in value or hedging against taxes. And so we we did that. And then as, as time went on, post-COVID, um, both of us were thinking about, is there an opportunity for us to retire sooner? And so we talked to our financial person and our, our financial person did a bunch of what you call Monte Carlo scenarios. And so we, we, we first were gonna retire about four years from now. And we ran the Monte Carlos and it said that, you know, you have a high likelihood of meeting your goals. Uh, then the, we, started to, we started to peel that back a little bit and said, what about this year? What about this year? What about this year? And then we got to a point where the Monte Carlo said that there's a 70 or a, I think it was an 80 percent chance or something like that of us meeting our retirement goals with the current market conditions, which is kind of interesting because the market conditions as of late have gotten better. And. It was it was it was really funny because when we when we looked at those market scenarios, it said that we were uh, highly likely to meet our goals, and that if we did have a shortfall, the shortfall would occur uh, when we turned ninety five. And so we started to really think to ourselves, "Am I really going to care if I run out of money at ninety five? Probably not." And the reality is, is if you look at the statistics there's a high likelihood that I don't even make it to 95. And so am I gonna am I gonna take a few more years out of my life today in order to subsidize the, the last parts of the, the last couple of years of life? Or do I live the best life that I can now uh, with, a, with a pretty high likelihood that I'll be able to meet my financial goals? Because our plan goes until we're both 100, just for the record. Maybe a little more personal than I'd like to go, but I think it provides a little bit of context. And so he, he ran those numbers. We took a look at it and we said, let's do it. And so my wife, she retired first. And then I came a few months after that. And we haven't looked back since. Um, you know, a lot of people ask us, you know, well, what are you going to do in retirement? And it's beautiful because my conversation is whatever I want or nothing at all. Um, and so once we made that plunge, it was, it was kind of interesting because then everybody else that we knew started asking about retirement. And they started asking us, well, what do you do with your time? And so I thought I'd share with you, what do I do with my time? Uh, you know, again, today was a busy day and every day is, is fairly busy. But, you know, there's a difference because most of us think about saving money. Most of us think about going to work. Most, think, most of us think about doing all these other things. But the question we know, and we think about winning the lottery, but the thing we don't really ask ourselves is that if we won the lottery, and we can do whatever we wanted uh, without, and money's not an object, and, and we had all of the time to do what we, we want to do, what is it that we would do? And the funny thing is, most of us don't know. And so when you're, when you're living that kind of life, it's, it's less about just having a bunch of this free time so you can sit back and watch TV or watch YouTube videos all day, but it's really what is it that you're going to do with your time? And so I really wanted to focus on doing specific things with my time. And I developed three specific priorities. Um, one is exercise. I, I've, back in 2001, my doctor told me that if I didn't lose weight, I'd probably end up with diabetes and having relatives that have been affected by diabetes in a, in a, in a real way, 
I knew that's something I didn't want to have. It's one of my biggest fears in life, believe it or not. The, um, the next thing I focus on is I focus on my relationship with my wife. You know, relationships, like anything else, they take nurturing, they take time, they take effort, they take things. Uh, it takes time to, to spend time. And so I wanted to, to spend time with, uh, with, with, with my wife. So it's, it's my health, uh, my wife, and then just making sure that I prioritize my time. You know, I, I have these concepts, and, and when you retire, you gain an incredible amount of clarity. And one of the things I think about is time is the one thing that you can never get back. You can always go out and make more money. You can always go out and buy more stuff, but you can never get more time. And in fact, time is so valuable that people, companies who are out for profit, pay big dollars to pay people for their time. Most organizations, and I, I challenge any of you to challenge me on this, most organizations pay upwards of 70 to 80 percent of their revenue for employee pay and benefits. And so that tells you how important uh, that time is. And so really focusing on how do I spend my time and where do I spend my time and who are the people that I spend my time with. And we'll have a whole nother video about how I look at friendships and how I look at people and those types of things, but really taking a look at how do I prioritize my time in a way that that allows me to do what I'd like to do because I don't I don't have to I don't have to think about it. So, and I, I'll tell you, my schedule uh, generally is about five days a week. I wake up, and I again sometimes like today I woke up a little early because I wanted to take my wife to her mother in law's house, but or my mother in law's house. But generally, what I'll do is I'll wake up anywhere between about eight and nine. I'll exercise for about an hour, and uh, then I'll hang out, spend some time with my wife, and then I'll go and run some errands. And it's funny because I'm almost like clockwork. I, I leave anywhere from about one to two o'clock, and I'm, I'm back home at about four to five o'clock. And then uh, twice a week, uh, one of the things I really enjoy doing is playing golf, and I go out and play golf and um, spend time golfing. I've made some new friends. I have one friend who's uh, in his 80s, and he and I go walking about once a week, and we walk about two, three miles, and we just talk about stuff. And you know what's nice is I'm able to learn from him because he's been through just about everything I've been through, and he learns from me because I'm able to keep him relevant, at least with some of the stuff that I know. And again, I don't, I'm not this, uh, I, I don't have this, this infinite wisdom of all things within my peer group. But it's, it's that. And then I, I think about, I, I, talk, I spend a lot of time talking to my friends when, when a lot of folks want to gain some perspective on, I have a friend now that wants to, uh, he, he's thinking about retiring. He's looking at retiring and about the next, uh, and actually in the next couple of months. And so he asked me, how did you give notice? Um, because, you know, sometimes when you're leaving a place and you know, you might have a bunch, you might be filled with vinegar because of situations that occurred, you know, leaving with grace. How much time do you give? What are some of the considerations? Uh, how do you handle health care and benefits and things like that? Um, and, and so we, we have, you know, I have those types of conversations, but I have a lot more clarity and a lot more patience now for uh, speaking to and hearing and helping them with, with, with some of their challenges. And so, uh, so again, today was a, was a, a prime example of a day that was incredibly busy. Um, the beauty of it is, as I've been able to, since 2001, I, I, I've lost about 30 pounds and I've really been able to, to get myself in some pretty decent shape. Uh, all of my numbers and all my markers are looking better. And I have a lot of years of, uh, com uh, creating content for this YouTube channel. So get ready. Um, and again, I, I do hope that folks, um, continue to uh, send me messages and, and ask questions and, and, and try to understand, uh, um, you know, themselves. Um, one of the things that you, that you gain when you retire is you gain the opportunity and the time to develop clarity. I, 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 was, I was talking to my wife a couple of days ago. My wife has an incredible amount of wisdom and, and I, I hope that you all meet her one day. But one day I was talking to my wife and I, I mentioned to her that you know, when I'm, when I'm talking and I'm speaking about some of these different things, I have so much more clarity now. Why is that? And she said, you know, you have the bandwidth now. 
you don't have to worry about getting up and going to work and doing all these different types of things. And you're not worried about, you know, 20, 30 other people. You're not worried about an organization making sure the organization's okay and what are you going to do if this happens or that happens and so on. And so then you just have the time and you have the ability to to um, uh, spend that time helping people uh, you know, accomplish their goals, which again is the is the reason for this channel. And I think that uh, you know I, I do hope to to continue to get questions from folks about uh, at uh, the real Salvador uh, Higante at gmail.com, and it's also in the beginning and the end of the video. But I also hope people subscribe so you could share with your friends uh, and and others that you know that might be going through something that might have a question and so on um, about things going on in their lives. So. There wasn't much on this, on this, uh, nothing pressing today that I, I, I wanted. I just, I had been thinking about, you know, the early retirement, how I got here and, and, and really showing that it's probably possible for a lot more, a lot more folks, because when you, if you get yourself out of debt, um, and you, and you really put some focus behind it, it's really an opportunity for a lot of folks. And I think with the affordable care act, the uh, Affordable Care Act made health care uh, a little bit more accessible in some places for some people. So I think that's great. So it's you're not stuck with just the COBRA equation where you pay 105% of the plan premiums and, and so on and so forth. So, you know, it's it's but I, I'd be interested and, and happy to share with you any of the uh, any of my thoughts or perspectives on on retiring early and how we got there and. What I am finding is I'm not spending what I thought I would be spending in retirement, which is good. Uh, I'm able to play golf, which is good. Um, and I'm able to do some of the things that I've always wanted to do. Um, and recently we went to the Panama Canal. We took a cruise. That was our retirement trip. And we went to the Panama Canal and made some friends and saw some cool things. And it was it was pretty neat. So, again, this is Sabado Gigante. I'm, I was excited to give you this video, so I wanted to make sure I got hot on the presses. Uh, again, please, I ask that you please uh, like the channel and uh, smash that subscribe button so we can, you know, build the channel, get the algorithms going so it goes out to more people. And um, if you have questions, I, I encourage folks, uh, this is really a channel that I see as a, uh, as a, a common person's Dear Abby uh, for lack of a better term, channel, where you have real people with real questions finding real solutions um, and, and real answers. So I, I just think that it's it's a great opportunity for some folks to, to get those answers. I'm, this is not a situation where I'm going to try to sell anybody anything. It's, you know, I'm not trying to get your information so I could broker. It's just, you know, I, I know that people may be afraid of those types of things. That's just not the case because I'm never going to ask you for anything. All I want to do is no, how can I help you? Or as I like to say, what can Brown do for you? So I hope everybody has a good rest of your day. And thank you for taking time to watch this channel because you could have been anywhere else in the world right now, but you're here with me and I appreciate that. So take care of yourself and each other and we will be back soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.